Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel here. Um, starting off the first part of the year with some of those items that we had listed in the end of year 2022 uh, video. And I've already seen that. There I had the uh, D17 uh, front wheel bearing replacement. Had that one going. I got another one. It was something that was on the bench when I went through that video, but I did not touch on it. So uh, let's flip over here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so on the bench here in the vise, I've got an old distributor. And this distributor came with some parts that I had acquired at some point in time. And I wanna do a video. I was always kind of curious myself about that brass uh, shaft that's down in here that I've heard uh, guys mention about being, being worn out and loose and what have you. And it just sparked my interest. Um, so I thought, what? What better time to do it than to do one right now on that video uh, or on that distributor. So I don't have it coming off a tractor to be able to test it once we're said and done, but I want to go completely through this thing. So I went ahead and purchased a few components here. Uh, went ahead and bought some new points. Got everything in there, uh, points, condenser, and a cap. And then I've got the bushing and these are shims from my understanding. And I went ahead and picked up a new uh, name plate here because the one on this particular uh, distributor is pretty rough. So we're gonna replace that while we're in there. And then I picked up one of the new um, connections here to, to bring the power in there, the terminal, the terminal insulator assembly. So I got those items from DJS tractor parts uh, typically, I don't buy a whole lot from them, but I have found that they do have some some good parts to get your hands on. So anyway, um, that's where we're at right now. We're just going to kind of go through the whole assembly. We'll start from the cap, and we'll just take everything down, look at it. Uh, I, I do not intend on removing the main shaft right here, but we will open up the other end to look at the gearing, and I'll kind of talk about what the manual says on that. So I've got both of my manuals here. This is my parts manual. Um, and if you don't have manuals, highly suggest you go to Gen Sales or give them a ring and get the manuals that you need. They've got everything that you need. A lot of times you can buy them in a packet that will give you the service manual and the parts manual. So here's the service manual. So I've got my uh, breakdown here. I don't know what each part, part number is if I need to order parts. But I got full and uh, description here on what to look for and what to do. So the disassembly inspection and the reassembly uh, portion for a Delco distributor. So we're going to be referencing both of these um, as we go through this process. But as mentioned, you can a lot of times get those as a package uh, deal, which makes it nice. You're not buying each individual and you can just get them bundled together. And in this case, seeing how this covers the WD-45 diesel, which as you know, I'm working on. In fact, the injection pump's right there and the head and the rods. Uh, it also comes with the injection pump uh, manual. So you can get a little more detail on that than what the standard manual is gonna give you. It's gonna tell you all about the testing and what have you. But back to this video, we're not dealing with uh, injection. We're dealing with a uh, distributor for electric. Uh, so anyway, let's flip around here and we'll just get started. Okay, so first things first, we're just going to go ahead and pull the cap off of here. And this one I didn't get a replacement for because I don't need one at the moment. Then you got your other part of the cap and that gets you down into your points, which probably most of you watching this video is already going to be familiar with that. This particular distributor is uh, pretty dirty in there, so... I'm gonna pull all these guts out of here real quick. Um, underneath here is the advanced um, mechanics. So we'll get into those too. Slide over here to our parts diagram. It's going to be this section right here, number 11, which is our advanced uh, weights. And there's some springs and stuff in there too. So we'll get into that here shortly. But uh, let's just start out by pulling all of our points and everything uh, out of there. All right, straight screwdriver will get you a long ways right here. So first thing we're gonna do is just start pulling everything apart. 
I want to be able to get the uh, points and everything out here. So I'm going to have to grab a wrench. And I can't remember if it's 5 sixteenths or what it is. It is 5 sixteenths on mine. Might not be the same on yours. And then the outside is different. It is actually an 11 30 seconds for my application. And again, we're replacing this little terminal stud here, um, which is kind of worn out at this point. So we've got our points loosened up. Let's go ahead and pull those out. Now there's our points. We're gonna be replacing that. Condensers down in here. This particular screwdriver will not fit. I'm gonna pull out the stud. Looks like I might have another washer on the outside. All right, so let's see. Might as well go ahead and get the condenser out now. Down in there. I know this right here, that these have always been an, a difficult place to replace those, uh, those condensers because they're so tight. A lot of times you have to grind down the edge of that bracket. I'm just going to put that little bolt right back in where it came out of so I don't lose it. Likewise on the points here. All right, so we got that. We're gonna go ahead and pull off our clips. And you note you've got a, a piece on this clip that's longer, that little notch. Uh, really does not matter where it's at, but that notch is what fits your cap right here. So when the cap's on, it'll go on that notch and it'll lock it and prevent your whole distributor cap from being twisted and taking out of time. Again, does not matter where that is located at. If you wanna put it back in the same spot, then this will be a good time right now to just make reference on where that is. I'm gonna reuse these clips. You can get replacements, but in my case, I'm not worried about that. Now we'll make note that the longer uh, screws going through this are the ones that are in the tab down here. You've got another one that's uh, short that you don't have to worry about. All right, so that's gonna get me into this little plate. And I will run a wire wheel over this and clean it up really well. So we'll reuse that. That gets us down into the weight advanced assembly in here. And you can see this one is not very free. Um, so we're gonna pull, we'll pull all of this out together, the shaft and everything, and then we'll, we'll tackle cleaning all this up and, and making sure sometimes you can have broken springs and stuff in here. So um, just wanna make sure that all that is loose when we get done. We'll get into that here in a minute. Okay, so I've got, I've already loosened up the bolts right here which are 9 16 in order to get the vertical portion of the distributor out and it'll just slide right out that's all there is to it um, if this is remaining on the tractor um, you know your your drive is going to stay where it's at and that's going to be setting your timing so without having to bring this thing back up on number one top dead center compression stroke, um, you'll want to make some kind of reference mark on here on everything so that you know where you're at. Because once that twists, you're changing all of your mechanics. So in my case, it's not on the tractor. Everything will be reset as this will be installed. So um, the next step is getting the pin out right here to pull this gear off and then this whole assembly will slide right out the top. Got a lot of rust and junk in there. 
So let's see here. Probably just gonna pull this bottom assembly out of the vise. Put it over to the side for right now. I'm gonna flip this over. Try not to knock the camera over here. And then those, those studs that are on there, I'm gonna try to get you a better shot of them. They will need to be grounded out. So that stud right there, or pin, whatever you wanna call it. There's one there and there's one on the other side. I'm gonna take my uh, grinder and I'm just gonna go ahead and zip them off and then we'll be able to pull that gear out. So now I'm just going to hold this in here and try to drive that out. I just have to hold it like this. I'm going to grab a punch and see if we can get him out. All right, so I just clamped it back here in the vise and then I had a much better uh, support. All right, so I ended up finding a, a nail there that worked. All right, got that done. Now the gear supposedly will pull off of that, so I'm gonna have to do a little tapping on him to see. Probably just gonna slide it back here in the vise be real careful I'll come down here with my uh, punch just tap on him so I didn't have to hit it much just saw that coming off of there there's your gear you gotta remember that this goes up and it should be pretty obvious with the pin in the bottom. And now we should be able to pull the whole assembly out. Like so we're just going to lift up on it. It's starting to get kind of tight. assembly. These weights are uh, they wave a little bit but not much. So we'll go through that here in just a second. Down in here there's our bushing. A lot of rust and junk so we're going to bar brush all of that out. That bushing um, is pretty good shape. See down in there. I mean, everything was solid. I don't think I'm going to press it out, but if you wanted to replace it or you got one of the sloppy, right there's your part number AB 3007D. Again, that's a DJS track of parts. Uh, yep, okay, that looks good. Now, I'm going to look on the inside here for these studs. They did not come through for my serial number. So probably while I'm down like this, I'll go ahead and take that off. I'm gonna write my serial number down before I start. Uh, that way if I booger it up, I've got it. So I'm gonna do that next. All right, so I decided just to go ahead and replace that bushing. It's not necessary in my application, as mentioned earlier, but I wanna just, I wanna do it to say that I done it type thing. So um, before I go ahead and drive it out, here is the shaft. I've got a bushing that goes underneath that. There was one up here above the uh, gear as well that I took off the bottom of this so I didn't get it lost. So those will be replaced. Um, but before I drive this other one out, I wanna verify that the new one that I've got fits um, the shaft. 
So I'm gonna pull it out of the packaging first and here it is. I'm just gonna make sure that we got a good fit and it's right out of the gate here. It just seems like it's uh, pretty tight. You know, there's no way I could, uh, I could get that thing on there, which is interesting because this one came off pretty easily. I mean, there's there's no play whatsoever in that thing. So I don't guess I will. There's nothing made mention that the bushing has to be sized. So and you might have to. You might have to go through there and uh drive this in and then and then drill it back out. Just find that hard to believe. Anyway, this thing will not fit my shaft, so I'm not going to replace it. I will replace the uh, shims that came in my kit here. And then I'll just hang on to that bushing. I might have another another distributor at some point in time that's worn out and maybe that thing will uh, work for that one. So. Anyway, what I'm gonna do next is just take it over to my other vise, put a wire wheel on my drill, and we're gonna clean all this junk up, clean up the outside of it, go ahead and pull off the nameplate, which I have got my numbers written down over there. We'll get it pulled off. I do wanna mention that this little set screw right here, um, it looks like it's just to hold the bushing in place. So we can see down in there, you can see the inside wall of the bushing. So there's really nothing to do here. If you're gonna replace it, of course, you'll need to have that out so that you can drive it out of there. All right, so I'm just gonna clean this, uh, clean this thing up and um, then we'll get over there to the shaft with the advanced weights on it. All right, so I got the uh, housing all cleaned up here, as you can see, and got it ready to go. Went ahead and took my wire brush and, and cleaned it up. So next step is we're gonna look at our advanced uh, weight uh, system in here, and this thing's all corroded. Got a couple of springs on here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do with this is I'm just gonna take the springs off. I'm gonna undo the two nuts right here then we can pull that off and make sure that everything is all cleaned up here. Um, get all that rust and all that junk out of there. So that's gonna be my next step here. There's really not much to talk about on it, really. Let's start out. We'll take these two springs. I just wanna make sure that they're not worn out. A real thin pair of needle nose pliers works nice and you can use a screwdriver too if you want. And then as mentioned, um, we're gonna go ahead and pull off our two nuts right here and those are 10 millimeter. Looks like there is a lock on there too to keep them from vibrating. So. You want to once you discover where that is you want to go ahead and drive that down out of the way and the other one's right up here on the front probably just try to let it twist a little bit and then it'll it'll work itself loose This one here, go ahead and get it spun a little bit. Just drive these down. Okay. 
not much to it really. All right, that will expose the weights. So I'm just gonna look at this. I've got the, uh, the longer pointed side going towards the camera. Here's our weights. I need to be able to move freely here. So I'm just gonna pull these up. There's two on each side. And that one there is pretty much just locked in there. They are identical, so you really don't need to keep track of where they're at. There we go. All right, pretty nasty. It's all right, we're gonna clean all them up. And then I believe, I have to look back at the manual here. That might be locked on with a bushing. So the rest of this on here, I can just clean up with my wire wheel, um, which I'm gonna do all of these parts. So let me get that done. That'll get all the gunk and stuff cleaned off of here. And we'll clean off all of our weights as well. And then we'll just go ahead and uh, put it back together. So let me get it cleaned up and we'll cut back in. All right, so far I clean it up. This this top part here is actually separate. Um, it's the the advanced cam assembly, and it was caught there in the bottom earlier. But you just work this thing loose, and it'll come up off of that shaft. So it's got this little part of the pin that sticks down that goes down in one of the holes down here, and that prevents it from just twisting around on there. It'll it'll let it move back and forth in that hole. A certain amount and then with your springs and your weights it allows those weights to expand and contract and that will change your advancement on your on your uh, rotor because right here on top of this is where your rotor is going to be connected in so all right the rest of this is all made as one unit um, I'm just going to clean all of this up as mentioned earlier and uh, then I'll cut back in here in just a minute Okay, so I've got everything cleaned up at this point, and I'm just gonna go back uh, uh, to reassembly. I wanted to point something out. I read it in the manual earlier, but I didn't uh, quite understand what it, what it said, but right in the top edge of this, that's actually hollow, um, and that is where you are supposed to put a few drops of oil whenever you do your servicing and that will lubricate that shaft. So this sets on there and it should be able to pivot freely like so. Um, for me, seeing how this is new, uh, newly cleaned and being installed, I'm gonna use some of my Lucas assembly lube that I like to use. I'm just gonna put some on here, about out. I'm gonna put some on here. And then I'm going to let that kind of ease down in there and let that be my lubrication for right now. Um, so, spread out a little more of this. All right, so all of that is nice and free. And uh, next step is to assemble my weights back on here. And those go around the cam. Want, or two on either side, like like so. I, of course, I clean these up as well. They were pretty nasty. All right. So I got those in there. Now I'm going to put my plate back on. I feel like that needs to be flipped over. Let's 
trying to look at it to see when I cleaned it what more than likely the direction was. I believe it was down like that. Now I've got my the two uh, keepers that go on for the nuts. It's going to help me lock this thing in place. Those go on. The nuts here, I did not clean those up. I'll run my wire brush on my drill over them here in just a few once we get it reassembled. Take my 10 millimeter, tighten those down. Then once that's done, we're gonna bend these ears back up. And I might have to get a better grip on this. Okay, there's that one. This one, I'm gonna spin him around like this. All right, so those are good. I'm going to go ahead and put the spring. Well, let me wait on the springs because I want to go ahead and run my wire wheel over those two just to uh, clean it up. So let me do that first. see that everything is free now and moving. Grab my springs here. Might be easier now with a uh, little screwdriver. I use this little Alice Chalmers screwdriver. I, I don't use it much because I don't want to get it messed up. Okay. So now the springs are just going to help pull us back into the middle. Okay. That looks good. Um, I did clean up my shaft and everything too in the bottom. Got everything and put back to normal on this. So at this point in time, we're ready to put it back inside our housing. So let me put the housing back in here. Um, actually, I need to wait just a second because I need to go ahead and get these two rivets for our nameplate. I need to get those, uh, go ahead and punch those out. I was having an issue earlier finding a punch small enough, so I'm probably gonna have to drill them. So let me get that done first and then we'll slide them back together. All right, so I got the holes drilled out there for the nameplate. So we're ready to start reassembly. Uh, a couple of things here. We've got a washer that goes here that's gonna be riding down the inside. And then we'll have another washer on the bottom of everything once it's assembled. I'm gonna go ahead and use some of my assembly lube on this shaft as well. And we're just gonna slide him back down through there. All right, so we got that back in place now. Everything is nice and free and loose, which is what we want. All right, our next uh, step is we're gonna reassemble our innards here. 
So our points come in here and our power is gonna come in right next to that. So this will be the way it'll be positioned in there. And uh, on this side and this side, you're gonna have your clips. So let me get a couple of screws here. And these I have not cleaned up. I should have. But I'll do them from the outside once we're set and done here. All right, got that one. And then the outside clip's got a little uh, detent in it that goes in this. And that's the part that sticks up. And as mentioned earlier, that's going to be the part that also holds your, uh, your cap in place here. Get it in position and then I got one more over here on this side. Now I'm going to tighten all of these down. Okay. Looking better every second. All right, next, uh, next step here, we'll go ahead and slot in our electrical uh, terminal here. Drop that little lock washer. Push it all through here. And I gotta find that lock washer. I dropped him. I'm probably gonna have to use my magnet here. It's pretty small. All right, so I couldn't find the lock washer. I'll just have to look for it after a while. Go ahead and put our nut on here just to secure everything best as possible. And I bet that's uh, 11 30 seconds. Yep. 11 30 seconds right there. Now we're going to put our points on. Get them lined back in where they were before. I'm trying to get you a good shot here. All right, so as mentioned earlier, I've got a new point set, new condenser, rotor. So maybe the first thing here is let's go ahead and put that condenser in place. It's so hard to get that thing in here. I've had to at times come in here and grind off the edges of the clip here. I think it's a combination of finding it and then uh, pushing down. All right, so I got that. Okay, so that's gonna go into here. So let me loosen that up. All right, now let's take the points, the new points. We'll get them assembled. We need to take out this one screw. That's what's going to hold us in place. It's pretty straightforward here. So I'm finding something interesting. I don't know if I can get past my... Uh, should be able to. 
think he would. Ah, let's see what happens. This thing spun around on me. Points head. So we get that pushed down. Gonna tighten this nut up to get it up out of the way here. All right, now I'll loosen it back up so that I can get the points and the condenser on there. Sometimes these are the trickiest. A pair of needle nose pliers though can sure save you a lot of time. It's a lot easier too doing it right here on the bench versus on the tractor. Now obviously we cannot set the gap on this. Um, well, I guess we could actually. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We can set the gap. Gap should be 20 thousandths. All right, got that. Slide in our screw. I hope you can see all this. It's kind of not real easy to get my camera up here. All right, so to set the gap here, we would have to rotate around. We have to know where top dead center is. We're gonna be on a high point here in this little brass. We can move that and you can see that moves the whole assembly. And we're eventually gonna get a little gap right here between our points. That's where you need to get a filler gauge. All right, so it's 20,000, so I got a 20,000 filler gauge. And I'm just going to put it right in here in between the points. I'm gonna make an adjustment until it moves freely in there. That's too loose. I'm gonna tighten them up just a little bit. You got a, just a little bit of drag right there. That feels good. I'm gonna tighten up the other screw here that you can't see, and that will lock the whole assembly down. I want to double check everything. That looks good. All right, so that's got our gap set um, at this point. So I don't have a new cap. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this old one on here just to kind of show you what everything's gonna end up being. So we got that, and then you're gonna have your new rotor. It'll slide down in there. All that will change for the timing. And then, of course, you'll have your, your cap. And your cap's got a little detent here that sets and locks everything in place. All right, so that looks pretty good, but we still have one major step here that we have not done, and that is to get the gear back on. So I've got my gear sitting over here. Um, it's just gonna slide right up on there like so. I might have to open the lid back up here in order to get back where I need to be because that shaft will wanna slide up in there. All right, so I'm gonna have to drive that down just a little bit to get our holes to line up, which means I gotta get back in here in the top. And get my rotor out of here. Just gonna hold down on him. Give it a little tap.
All right, one crucial step I just missed. <laughs> I forgot there's a uh, another washer that goes on right here. So I'm gonna pull that back off, put my washer on, and then we'll slide the, the gear back in place here, like so. Now, uh, the pin, remember the pin I cut loose? I have to do something a little bit different here. I've got a roll pin that should fit with what we got here. So I'm gonna take this and put it in. Just gonna use my bench here. All right, so it's sticking, it's long. That's all right. Um, before I cut that off, I've been told from an Alice mechanic, if you do this to go ahead and put another roll pin inside this one. And I apologize, I just looked at my camera here. You might not have seen all that. But I just drove that pin in, take you another pin, and you wanna drive it inside so you got two of them and i hope that i've got one small enough to fit i think i do but no promises yep so you put two together just like that and now i'm going to take my side grinder and i'm going to just grind that off and uh, we should be good to go okay so that squares that away. I'm not gonna bore you with that. Um, so that's the top part of the distributor. I know we spent a fair amount of time here going through that. I think what I might do is break this video off right now and we'll make a part two video that's going to show the other part of the distributor. So the whole bottom, the whole bottom part here because there's quite a bit that I can do on this as well. Um, don't have any new parts to go in there, but I can take this apart, show you the gearing, the shaft that goes through the back there, and then in that same video, reassemble our completely rebuilt distributor top uh, back into the main piece. So I think that's what we'll do for right now. Um, thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe, share this video, and stick around for part two, where we'll finish this distributor rebuild up. Have a good day.